Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome David Morgan, Precious Metals Analyst at TheMorganReport.com. Mr. Morgan is the founder of TheMorganReport.com and started investing in the stock market well before turning 18 years of age. So, several years ago, he put his long study of the free market economies to work researching the economy, stock market behavior, and precious metals, especially silver. Although very familiar with gold, Mr. Morgan believed that silver needed more exposure and would be utilized increasingly as technology continued to demand more and more of the metal. He has followed the silver market daily for over 30 years, and much of the silverinvestor.com site is devoted to education. David, thank you so much for joining us. Rena, thanks for having me. You're welcome. The floor is yours, sir. All right. Well, welcome everyone to the virtual reality that we're all living in. Put on your VR hats and let's have a little ride here. So this is one that I've been contemplating uh, doing for some time and I'll get to that in a moment. Let's see if I can get these slides to advance. Okay. So as you know, this is for the Money Show and thanks for inviting me Money Show. It's been a real pleasure to work with you throughout the years. And now David Smith has kind of joined uh, doing these presentations as well. David does a not quite as many presentations as I do, but uh, I'm a little jealous. He works for me and he usually gets more views on his presentations than I get on mine. But regardless, so this one is a silver a get rich quick proposition. And I'm going to answer that question. But before I do, I want to give out some forward looking statements and some cautions. One, I am not a registered investment advisor. Two, I do not have an affiliation or registration with the Communities Futures Trading, Commodities Futures Trading Commission. And lastly, these are opinion only. When it's a fact, I'll let you know. There is a saying which you can take or leave, which is one good futures trade can make up for a lot of mistakes. And that's true, but most people that venture into the futures market lose money. And it's a really big percentage, like 98% of people that start in the futures market end up losing money. However, with that said, I want to go ahead and talk about silver in a general way. This is a little bit of repeat for some of you. I've given this lecture several times. I always present it differently because I don't rehearse. But uh, what if this is the final leg of this precious metals market? And I'm convinced with everything I have known about markets, especially the silver market, this is the last leg up. And I believe because of the currency destruction going on throughout the entire planet, that this will set a record in paper terms. Remember, in basic arithmetic, if something goes to zero the, and you divide it by zero, you get infinity. So that doesn't mean silver's going to infinity. It doesn't mean that at all. What it does mean is that there's less and less trust in the US dollar, and the dollar will be the last one trusted then the paper price will change relative to the gold and silver markets and the stock market and the housing market and everything else. But because there is a lack of trust during the final phase of a currency breakdown, the run to gold becomes extreme. And this isn't something that happened like in 1980, which was, I think, a precursor to what's happening this time. This is one of those things where you have a complete disruption, and these occur only about every 350 years. So from my study, that's where we are. So this is an opportunity for those that are willing to allocate some funds to the precious metals. And for those that are very risky and know how to do it, I'm going to show you why there's a rare, rare opportunity in the silver market or others uh, certain times. So the Dow silver ratio stocks are high, silver's low. I know this only goes to 2013, but the general idea is silver's pushed up a slight bit but the general idea is the ratio is about uh, crazy, crazy right now in favor of silver. So you really want to, as a spread trade, you could short the Dow and go long silver. And if you had the ability to hold that ratio trade for a long time, you'd probably come out extremely well. Silver today's dollars. I've put this out several times. This is from shadowstats.com, my friend John Williams. If you use the 1980 metrics, it's a $600 bill for a, an ounce of silver. You could go by the CPI that's the current one, and it still comes out to somewhere around 120. The two bull markets that we have experienced, one is in the past, the 1970s bull market, and one we are ongoing. And I think 
we are now at this place where um, we see this long base in 1980 along here, and then we get this final acceleration. And so now we are in this long base and we've just started to get a bit up and now we've come off a bit. And so where are we going to get that acceleration? And the answer is, I don't know exactly. But what I do know is what I'm gonna be presenting here in the rest of this. And this is usually, and I'm convinced so far, that this leg is the one where you're gonna make the most money. As I've said many times, and it's in this presentation, 90% of the move comes to the last 10% of the time. So if you were not a participant in this whole market and only got in, let's say in January of 2021, you would probably do better than a lot of investors that got in here and watched you go up here and then got mad and sold here and are never coming back in the silver market. Because you really want in any investment to get in when the trend is your friend and especially in an acceleration phase, as long as you don't let one thing get in your way. And there was a movie in the 1970s about it and it was talking about this word and it said that this word is good and I'm not gonna make a, an adjective whether it's good or whether it's not good. What I do know is an old adage in the stock market that bulls make money and bears make money, but pigs get slaughtered. Especially what I'm about to show you, I don't want anyone to get too greedy because if you do, you're gonna have it and lose it. All right, so what if 9% of the move comes in the last 10% of the time? And the answer is it did in 1970 to 1980. The last few months of the market was about a year, 13 months of 180 month move. So it really was 87 and a half percent came in the last 7% of the time. Does that mean it's gonna happen this time? The answer is no. Does it mean it's 10%, 90% and 10% of the time? No. What it means is markets, the stock market, the real estate market, the technology stock bubble, the Japanese stock market, all of these markets accelerate at the end. Is it always 90% of the move and 10% of the time? No, but it's generally like that. So I've had people that actually wanted to know like, you know, what date has it started and things like that. It's the idea that's important, not the exact um, the exact amount of you know time. I don't know, but I know it's, it, we're getting close. So as I said, if you start in 1979, silver was at six bucks, which is an all-time high, by the way. So you're buying like, oh my God, I could have bought silver at a buck 29, you know, 10 years before, but now it's at six. Yep, buy it at a new high. And there's a reason for doing that actually. And if you did buy it at the all-time high in January of 79, and he waited for a year, you had an 800% gain, actually a little bit more than that. So here's the crux of, the, um, of this uh, presentation. And this is a chart of the last big move in silver, which was basically uh, from April of 2011 to really the last day of May excuse me, the last day of April, 2011. I think May 1st, it might've gone up a little bit more and then it fell right off. So we're looking at days of trading. So that's a day, there's another day, there's another day. For those that don't know, uh, on one of these type of formations, which I chose for this slide presentation, that is the price for the whole day from there to there. The left tick is the opening price of silver. The right tick is the closing price of silver. And the range for the day is depicted by that line. So for example, this line here, it opened at that price and it closed slightly less, but during the day, boy, did it have a move. It went that high, it went that low, and opened there and closed there. And so from that perspective, oh, silver didn't do much. It opened there and it closed there. But during the day, it went 
crazy big. And that goes with this volume. And volume is one of the most key important parts of technical analysis. A lot of people really don't emphasize it enough. I almost overemphasize it. So what can you do? Can you get rich quick? And the answer is yes, if and only if you choose your timing so precisely well and you don't get greedy that you do a technique, which I may make a video and I may charge for it. I just did this recently for a gentleman that paid me a consulting fee, 500 an hour and then $500 later, in my pocket, I taught him probably 20 years of futures trading. So in this situation, you want acceleration. Now, normally I use horizontal lines. Everybody use channel, channel formations. They are okay. They don't work nearly as well as horizontals. So I'm just gonna start right here arbitrarily. Well, it's not arbitrary, I'm using the chart to help me. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this technique and I'm going to start my trade and my trade is going to last a week at the most at seven trading days i said at the most so now it's got a break it's consolidated here it's bullish and now volume starts to increase volume is increasing i said that the volume is increased with the volume increasing and the trend is your friend you got a pretty good assurance we're going to start moving up so now i'm going to put on my plan and i'm going to go long if and only if it breaks this 42 level, and it did. So it closed there, so now I'm in, so now I buy. So I buy on this day. I've got one day, two days, three days, four days, five days. Normally three is my magic number, three days. But if you wanna get greedy, you could go to four. If you go to five, you're probably gonna be wrong. And so what you would do was you would start, I'm just gonna use 42 as the start, sorry for the, I'm not really that good at using this pin draw. So you're in at 42, so you go four days, let's say. So one, two, three, four. Let's say we get out after the close. The close was at 46. So that's only a $4 move, which really isn't what I'm trying to shoot for in this lecture here. Let's just say we went to five, but we went to 49. We'll just play with it. So you went seven, dollars in five days times 5,000 ounces. And that is a lot of loot, any way you slice it. So that shows you there are ways that you can get rich quick in silver. It's very rare, very rare. And if you're a position trader like I am, you would be, let's say, in this congestion phase. And once it broke out at 36, you would be long, and then once it's in your favor, you can just move your stop up, which is the traditional way to do it. A lot easier, a lot less stress. In, the, in this market, I don't have the next chart. I don't have a chart available, but I started when silver is at 19, way down here. And then it went up to 26, which is showing right in here. And I got out because it was congesting there and it looked like it was stalling out. So I've gone from 19 on a channel formation breakout to 26. And then I got right back in at 26 because QE2 was announced. And I went from 26 up to approximately 50. And I actually got out on this day, the high, believe it or not, I did. And so that was 20 to 50. That was a $30 move in whatever that was. Um, all, I forget when it broke free. I'll just, uh, I don't remember, but it's $19, remember that. So whenever 19 broke up through 19 to the 1950 level or so I was in. So that's really the end of the presentation. What I do do, and I'm not gonna do this for this because I'm thinking about making a course, is futures will kill you. But there's a way to do this using options that will, could lose you money if the options expire worthless. But again, it's a three-day trade under very unique circumstances. If you follow the rules, you can bet a little to win a lot and have a lot less risk because you're using options and not futures. So this is a brief mention about the blockchain. 
go to ag.lode.one that's uh, or go to lode.1 uh putting silver and gold on the blockchain um and our service we have uh the basic newsletter which is the premium service the mastermind service and the advanced service uh last year we produced 63 percent in our top tier only which i recommend 70 to 80 percent of your funds go into those stocks six out of six actually seven out of seven every one i picked was up the average if you combine them all put equal money in all of them was a 63 percent gain for last year uh that's what the first page of the report looks like Remember the Silver Manifesto is the best money you can buy. Just go to the silvermanifesto.com. There is a chapter in there on how we choose a mining company. Well worth the money for your do-it-yourselfers. It will lead you into a top tier company, which is actually an investment, not a speculation, which is really the cornerstone of good investing. Second book or third book I've written uh, with David Smith, Second Chance, an excellent way to learn how to not give money back. This is the most important book you ever read. Well, maybe not. That may be somewhat of a slight exaggeration, but it's pretty close to the truth. If you're thinking of the precious metals already made their run, you're going to miss the biggest move in history, which is what this whole lecture has been basically about. I have a YouTube presence, I have a Twitter presence, and I'm asked to lecture around different venues such as this. So I'm ready for any questions, if there are any, and I'm not sure how much time I've got left. Hi, David. Hi. Thank you. There are just a couple questions. Okay. Um, do you foresee governments uh, nationalizing gold and maybe silver in the future when prices skyrocket? And how do you think this would happen and how would you prepare for this? Yeah, that's a good question. I don't, but if it were to happen, it would be gold. I There's just no way I can see silver. Well, let me rephrase that. <clears throat> Nationalization means that a country that has silver mines or gold mines in their country says that, Mr. Canada, you are in a relationship with our country to mine gold. However, we're reneging on the contract. We're, we're, can we're canceling the contract. In other words, it's a contract dispute. It's illegal, and I doubt it'll happen, but it could happen. It has happened in the past. So the country says, we're no longer honoring our contract. We own the mine. You don't. Get out of here. That's nationalization. It could happen. Uh, and so how do you prepare for it? Well, there's actually, and I'm not trying to be cute here. There's actually a pretty easy way to prepare for it. Usually there's enough leakage through the um, political class talking to the miners or whatever that everyone that's paying attention gets kind of wind of what's going on. And then there'll be an official statement. Someone from the political class will come out in onto the TV screen and say, we would never nationalize the mines in Timbuktu. Never happened. As soon as they say that, you're guaranteed that they're gonna do it. So that's number one. So when they say no, you know, the third time they deny it, then the, they'll do it. So they usually deny it three times and then they perform what they say they're not gonna. So that's one way. The other way, of course, is to hedge continually, or I would say continually hedge as you're getting scared. Or, of course, sell out. That's one way to do it, too. I mean, that's the kind of stuff I monitor. Uh, do I get it right 100% of the time? No, but I haven't had that situation where it's happened. Um, so part of it, Raina, help, Raina, help me out. We had uh, nationalization, well, gold or silver. Was there another part than gold or silver? I think it'd be gold more than silver. I don't think it's going to happen. There will be several clues that it's going to take place. Uh, there's a way to either you hedge your portfolio, you sell early, or you wait for the announcement that they're not going to do it, and then you exit. So I think I covered that. All right. Thank you so much. And hey, I'm being asked if you'd give us a good pick. I have a good pick. Mag Silver is a good pick. Mag, uh, we had Mag as a financing probably in the 12 cent range. I'm not sure where it's at now. It's going to be one of the best producers in the silver sphere. It's by my friend and I honor very much Dr. Peter McGaw. Dr. McGaw has taken time with me to teach me a little bit about geology. and He's certainly probably, in my view, the world-class best geologist for Mexico, bar none. And there's a lot of good ones there, but uh, he's, in my view, uh, the best. 
So I'd say MAG is a safe one. It's uh, one that's got a lot of ability to continue moving up. It's already started to act fairly strongly, but once the numbers come to the bottom line, you're going to see big money get in there, institutional money, because these guys can't really invest in a quote unquote speculation. But once they start really producing, it's going to be, oh my God, look at they're producing at this margin, which is better than almost any other primary silver producer. And not only that, but they're going to be growing their uh, rate of production over the next few years. And so it's, it's about as safe and sane uh, an investment. I own it. Uh, I've owned it for a long time. But uh, it's it's a big winner in my view. And could you just repeat the name of that pick again, please? Mag M A G. Got it. Mag. Thank you so much. Yeah. What do you think of Silver Wheaton? Love it. I was uh, one of the big proponents of it when everyone was beating it up, and other analysts wouldn't put it on their list, and they just uh, got really scared about this tax thing. And of course, I being you know having abilities that people don't, and that's why you want to subscribe to someone like me, not necessarily me is that one of the conferences I sat down with the board of directors basically for over an hour and have them explain to me to my satisfaction what was really going on with this tax thing. And I bought the heck out of it, <coughs> excuse me, before that thing was resolved. And of course the company just took off. One of the people that charges about four times what I do for his reports uh, finally came on board after it made the big move. It's still a good, it's, a, it's fairly valued now big it's right in the top tier i mean if you follow me into that company almost any at any time you'd be very happy and where do you see the ceiling for silver that's a tough one because silver usually spikes i was asked to write an article for futures magazine years ago and it was called spiked that's the name of it usually has a spike low and a spike high i suspect unfortunately they'll have a spike high again this this time so I said in 2003 or four, when I wrote my first book, Get the Skinny on Silver Investing, that uh, I saw $100 silver. I still do. I think that could be low. I don't know. Uh, I think once we get through the $50 level this time, and I believe it'll happen this time, then you'll see a lot of new money come in because the way the momentum players play these markets is when they get a new high, that's when they start, to, that's when they begin buying. So $50 on a continuous contract, $50 today in 2020 or 2021 does not equal 50 in 2011. It certainly doesn't equal 50 in 1980, but that's not the way the computers look at it. They look at 50 is 50 is 50. So once it hits that, you'll see an acceleration. You'll see probably some really large buying. And by that time, probably most of the physical market will have dried up to in silver, not in gold. There's still a fair amount of gold, could in gold. And you'll see an acceleration because there'll be a lot less physical silver available to the market. So any new buying with a little bit left is gonna push the price much higher. So I think you could go from 50 to 75 and I don't know, I want to sound too bullish, but you know, a matter of weeks. And you could go from 75 to 100 in a couple in a month or two. I mean, that's the way silver performs. It gets, as I showed, could you get rich quick in silver? And the answer is yes, but you gotta be perfect on your timing. All right. Will you recommend silver ETF? If yes, which one? Oh, I know some of the owners. I mean, I like the SIL, uh, the SILJ. Um, but I always tell anyone that subscribes that, uh, you know, that's an adjunct to one owning a physical and two owning some really good mining companies. But a lot of people like to play the ETFs. Most of the hedge fund guys I know still do. And I get it. They got a lot of money to manage. It's a mouse click away. It's a proxy for silver and it moves with the silver price, but it's really not silver. But, um, you know, I'm free market. I just do have that caveat. My preference, I can't control anyone. I don't want to. But my preference would be to have a solid base first and then go to the ETFs. Thank you so much for that. Uh, now, I have a Money Show member that is saying, um, if I am a Canadian and have U.S. money, do you prefer I invest with the TSX or U.S. market if given a choice? Yeah, I get that a lot. It's a great question. I mean, in the long run, all currencies fail. You know, I mean, this idea that you can trade currencies is very true. There's a lot of people right now trading foreign exchange and making money at it on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. I call it the banker's last vestige of hope. The reason I use that is because all currencies are gonna fail 
And most will fail against the dollar, although on the dollar index, I know the dollar is weak right now. But basically, the, the gain isn't sufficient in the currency exchange in the long run to make it worth it, in my view. So if you're Canadian, stick to Canadian dollars. If you're US, you can stick to US dollars. If you want to play the game, you can. Uh, is there a slight advantage? Yes, but there's always the possibility of being whipsawed for an exchange rate um, parity or whatever could happen. So I think I like to keep things simple. I don't try to play it in the stock market by investing on a certain exchange. I just stick to whatever I'm based as that jurisdiction. It makes it easier tax wise too sometimes because sometimes you get a foreign reporting requirement because you are on an off exchange and there's some stuff that I don't want to bother with. But you know, I'm free market again, I'll repeat. And if you want to do it or think there's enough of an advantage to doing it, go ahead. All right, thank you so much. And how do you feel about Fortuna? Well, it's on the list. Um, I love them as far as their management goes and their project goes, and it was just being a real dog. It's not. It was definitely a value play, and I rate these companies. I rate them on several factors combined into like one number, and it's tough, but it helps, but it's not perfect. And I just had a hard time not wanting to buy more Fortuna because it was such a valuable investment. I like it. I think it's finally coming up. I think it will continue. I think they're doing a lot right. And I really can't find much negative to say about it. Okay. Can you tell, if, if, tell us, in your opinion, if it's better to buy physical silver than stocks and ETFs? Absolutely. I mean, I've tried to be consistent from day one. I've always advocated buying physical metal before you ever buy the Morgan Report because we specialize primarily in, and in, on the equity side, I do some trading, which I show to my people by video, like I just did in this presentation, but uh, mostly it's the equity side, but I don't really want anyone to sign up unless they have a solid base in physical metal, but that doesn't mean to go overboard. A lot of people in my view, uh, and there's people that are, you know, silver only never want to be in the stock market. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that really, but, uh, to gain the leverage. I mean, everyone makes more money in paper silver than they make in physical. It's just the way it is. The futures market, the options market, the equities usually outperform by two or three fold what the silver market does. The good ones. I'm talking what I teach, the top tiers, the mid tiers. Uh, speculation's a speculation. Any, anybody can list a uh, hundred stocks that are micro cap stocks and one of them goes up a hundred fold and then they tout that they did that but they don't tell you about the 99 that didn't really do much or how many went to zero or whatever. So it's really tough on the speculation side. I do it. I do have some, but I teach to bet a little to win a lot. And only if it starts to make a new high and the company has changed, do I add more. People say, well, you're crazy to do that. It's not crazy. It's actually quite smart. In my opinion, it'd be like going to the horse races and betting on a long shot. And now you're only about four furloughs out and your horse is actually in the lead it was a hundred to one shot. Now, when you go, imagine you could go to the window and put more money on that horse before the race ends. Of course you can't, it's illegal, it never happened, but in the stock market you can. You can say, wow, that horse really took off and it's going to you know, have a few more years or whatever, I wanna put more money on it. But the cost is gonna be much greater. The odds aren't gonna be a hundred to one anymore, they're gonna be 10 to one, but they're still pretty good odds. And I'm the one that figures the odds for you. That's my job. And so I said, you still bought about a 10 bagger here. So go ahead. Well, I bought it at 20 cents and it's two bucks. Yeah, but it's a $20 stock. Go ahead and buy it. You can buy it fairly significantly. And I've done that several times. Western Copper is an example of that. It was bought by Glamis and then bought by Gold Corp. So anyway, enough on the speculation side. <laughs> <laughs> you got another that, one? That's okay. I do. So just, uh, we're going to close down this way. I'd like you to repeat your recommendation from earlier because people are asking you to uh, repeat that, please. One okay, more time. Matt, yeah, it's mag silver M A G. Great. And let's end on this. When do you anticipate the next big stock market crash? Boy, I just got done writing the report and sent it to my wordsmith lady. Who's awesome. Kind of changed my mind. I did say to my people on the video that I thought we'd see something before the election. I've altered my view. I think that since Trump has put the Fed and the Treasury together, and I don't know the particulars, I've not read anyone that really does. I do, and I know for a fact that almost all the current administrations throughout the last several years 
our elections, I'm talking all the way back to like Kennedy, we see the stock market getting pumped up before the election. So I think that's probably the most likely case is level to higher through the election. And then after that, yeah, I think we're going to see it. Is it going to cap happen in November? I don't know. I uh, always say the market knows more than me. But there are usually clues, as I showed you in the video that or in the presentation. When I start seeing the volume uh, drop off or huge volume on the downside, that's a big clue. I'll probably make a video like that night for everybody that's a paid member and say, look, there's the volume. It's been acting weak. The internals are doing this, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I think it's going down. But as far as picking it out right now, very, very tough. Um, but it could happen before the end of the year. It kind of depends a lot on this next round of uh, the word we can't say with the mask thing. Uh, if that gets another um, surge because of winter or whatever the parameters are, then we might see the stock market sell off. David, it's always a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us. It's always fun to be here sitting in my own office, <laughs> being able to address so many people. So thanks for the opportunity. All right, sir. And you take care now. I will.